Hello and welcome to another episode of the Yogi Van Man. It's early morning. I've just awoken to a new day and first things first, sit down on the meditation cushion and just find my breath like to join give yourself however long you need create an intention for your day and just notice your thoughts feel your body observe your mind observe and feel your breath It's amazing what clarity is brought through breath. It's an intention place. Seal our breath with the sound of OM. Take a deep inhale. light today my friends hello and good day whatever day it is whatever time it is wherever you are it is a blessing to be alive uh, I'm cruising towards the gym this is another episode of the Yogi Van Man and I just wanted to welcome y'all thank y'all for being here and not only watching this but being here right being present in the moment Pocahontas She's beautiful back there. Nice and clean. Up here, you know we stay on that Cali. And I'm, uh, I'm excited, it's leg day, so stay tuned. This is another day in the life.
So it's just a light day. Just making sure you show up is the number one priority. Up next, 10 minutes on this. It's a good way to get the lactic acid flowing. I'll see y'all in a bit. I gotta say, music, especially that of the classical realm, it does amazing things for your well-being. I just left the gym, and the gym is a great way of releasing endorphins. It's a happy molecule that your brain creates when it goes through uh, triumph. There's another thing that happens when you listen to that of the musical art, endorphins are released. This life is a blessing. My cup is not only half full, it is abundant, overflowing. I, uh, I like to look at the glass full in every situation, in every facet. And I understand that in times of stagnation, I am the only one who will get myself out. Now today was the first day that I've had off in like 10 days. And I slept in. I slept in until like 1 p.m. Internally, I looked at that as a failure. Right when I woke up, I thought, man, I just slept for almost 12 hours. It's lazy. Then the angel on my shoulder reminded me that rest is important. And it's funny, the dialogue, the inner dialogue that we have, the inner critic constantly judging. Where can you lessen up? Where can you be a bit uh, brighter, a bit easier on yourself and understand that you've got to be your own best friend, not your own worst enemy? Uh, I feel really happy. I thank you. I love you. And more is to come. Pocahontas is parked. Incense is burning. My home. Underneath a beautiful tree. So that in the morning when I awaken, I get some shade. Top is not popped currently, but uh, got my bike. I'm back. Pocahontas chilling hard. And uh, I'm about to go to my sister's house and do some emails. Just got a laptop. Pretty excited. Setting up uh, my account for Hometown Yoga. And just showing you. This is usually where I live. Simplicity. Bliss. I just finished uh, my CPR training, getting everything set for hometown yoga, and uh, I was just thinking about what a blessing it is to be able to help open a studio, and how it all happened. Um, very synchronistic, it was kind of beautiful timing. I had been a student again for about three months, and I've told the story, but those of you that don't know, um, September 10th, I'll be helping open a yoga studio in Culver City. I just finished uh, this stuff called Zenefits, getting my, uh, basically, passport information and uh, ID information, make sure I'm a, a U.S. citizen, and then I needed to get a CPR certificate and renew my insurance and all that fun stuff, but it's done. I used my computer. I just finished, uh, been reading a couple books, Dalai Lama's Big Book of Happiness. And I'm gonna read you a little, little snid bit from it. Our mind is formless, shapeless, and while in one way it is very difficult to control, in another way it is very easy to control, to transform. 
Control or transformation at the mental level comes about entirely through voluntary willingness, through enthusiasm. And for those of you that know me, I thrive off enthusiasm. We are all supposed to be passionate, enthusiastic beings. So reading this, it was a breath of fresh air, and it's also a lot of stuff that we, we already know. We're tapped into that, that uh, truth. There's no external force that can change our minds. It can only be changed voluntarily. So in order to develop that kind of voluntary enthusiasm, you must see the benefit of certain positive ways of thinking, such as loving, kindness, respect, respect for others, and rejoicing in others' good activities, and the harmfulness of anger, jealousy, and other negative minds. See, that's the thing, is the balance between the two, understanding that the light and the dark is within you, and you have the mental fortitude and capacity to observe those within you and choose which one you put your energy towards. Um, I want to reduce these negative emotions and increase the positive ones. You then voluntarily make effort in that. It's really that simple. I love how simple the Dalai Lama writes this book, but if you haven't read uh, the Big Book of Happiness. It's The Secret of Happiness. It's a really quick read. Um, the last page is really funny. You are the Dalai Lama, yet you are also human. Have you ever acted unethically? This was a question by one of his students. His Holiness says, I have often told people that my relationship with the mosquito is not ethical. If there is a danger of malaria, then I act aggressively with them. But if I am in a good mood and there is no danger of malaria, then I am very generous to the mosquito and let it suck my blood. Once I saw that when the mosquito was full of my blood, it just flew away without showing any appreciation. I really think it was a female mosquito as females are more aggressive mosquitoes. It made me curious and once during a meeting at Oxford University where I was sitting in front of the dignified professors, I asked them if anyone had an idea about the level of brain size which has the ability to show appreciation. Dogs and cats are capable of showing appreciation. Therefore, on the basis of my observation, I am generous to the first mosquito which sits on me but lose patience with the second, third, or fourth one. We are human. Simplify. Understand that the overcomplication of our experience creates stress, which leads us away from happiness. And this book was a was a very good read as well. Um, as a teacher, I deal with uh, these three things in myself and in my students: addiction, procrastination, and laziness. This is a proactive guide to the psychology of motivation, and it breaks it down really really easily you have uh, the activity that you're trying to accomplish its consequences and the activation energy needed in order to accomplish the activity so it's um, the true motivation a person has in a scenario is as simple as to get rid of pain or to reduce it or to uh, release mental balance, and that is through serotonin, oxytocin, um, all the happiness molecules. When you go to the gym, you release the endorphins. Um, and these things, a lot of the times, 90% of it is showing up, of, of getting off of your butt, getting out of your bed, and creating momentum. So it talks a lot about this, the psychological nature of motivation. And um, you know, that bleeds into seeking pleasure or avoiding displeasure, um, conscious versus unconscious mind, the dynamics of the unconscious and conscious mind, and the mental framework of motivation. We have now, for the most part, become acquainted with the various nuances of the pleasure unconscious and the ways they manifest themselves in human behavior. In understanding how this system functions, we can now proceed to develop the methods to control it and to use it to our conscious advantage.
We will find it enormously helpful, however, to first examine the psychological framework inside the human mind, where all these motivational conflicts actually take place. So it goes into the parts of perspective activity. It was a really interesting book, and I think it's, it, it really breaks down to starting the task, right? Becoming aware of what it is that you want to accomplish. And for me, that's when actually writing it down. Writing it down, you now have it set in stone. You see it outside of your own mind. And um, our lives change when our habits change. You have to evaluate your friends and your criteria and ask yourself, how will this make me the best version of myself? I think it's important to pray, to study, to be generous, um, and to say right here, right now, nowhere else, um, God created us for happiness, and only God can fill that void. So when you offer all of your success, and all of your failure, all of your fullness, and all of your emptiness to God, it becomes a lot less of a burden. I think it's, um, it's something that you can transform your life when you look at everything as a miracle, rather than looking at nothing as a miracle and it all happening by chance. So you can't, you can't make excuses. You have to take a stand for what you believe in and know that it, uh, it begins when you make it begin. And, um, yeah, I'm excited. I just finished two books. I'm going to start up uh, another one. The library is here. I'm thinking either The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, maybe rereading The Secret. These are all my yoga books. I need to delve back into the, uh, the sequencing and the art of the human body. I'm taking a step outside over at my sister's place and look at what just bloomed. Hibiscus flower, baby. Marigolds are still doing well. These gardenias, I believe. Smell like vanilla and magic. The lavi. If you watched the uh, earlier episode, you saw that uh, I like to water these once a day. Brittany actually does it when I'm not here, but uh, mad shout out to Britt, my sis, chef, I love you. I'm about to do some stretching and uh, kind of decompress before a Friday night service. Bertie G's uh, went in last night as a, as a guest with one of my friends, the bartender, Alex, and just sitting down, watching, watching everyone do such an amazing job there. It's, it's been fun to be a part of the team, and I eat some tri-tip. Ate some uh, some greens, some ribeye. Kind of indulged, so I'm gonna stretch. I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna get the uh, the lactic acid flowing after that leg day, and make it a great weekend. Do what it is that fills your cup, and tune in next week. I'm going to uh, my little brother's football game, Troy. If you're watching, I'm very excited to watch you out there, and uh, be cheering for you. It's going to be fun to see the family. We'll probably camp out at the Rose Bowl. It's going to be the Aztecs versus the Bruins, and uh, pretty excited for it. But thank you so much for watching another episode of the Yogi Van Man. Give me your feedback. Give me your questions, and uh, stay blessed out there, my friends. Namaste.